Hello, I'm Julie Porter from the Churchill Foot Band and welcome to the final To the Beat of the Drum podcast for the Community Relations Council Good Relations Week. Today the theme of this podcast is about women in bands as we look at some female members of bands and what it was like for them to join a male perceived environment and how they enjoy participating in band culture. The band culture is still surrounded in misconceptions and a lot of the time the good work done by bands like charity and community fundraisers and cross community work are not known to the public, which is why the work of the London Bands Forum and the Community Relations Council is important, as they work to break down these misconceptions and show the positive musical and cultural traditions of bands in Northern Ireland. Today I'm joined by Jane Dotty, an experienced member of the Killaloo Accordion Band, Adele Miller, who has broken new ground in 2021 as the first female drummer for the Hamilton Flute Band, and Janice Channing, an established and experienced player in the Churchill Flute Band. I am joined by Jean Dotty from Killaloo Accordion Band. So Jean, when and why did you join Killaloo Accordion Band? Well, I joined Killaloo Accordion Band in about 1975 after Joan Kearns and Helen asked me to join. And that was because Mervyn was already in the band. And I think it was to try and keep Mervyn's attendance up, you know. <laughs> but I also enjoy music and was willing to give the accordions a go. And since then, I love being in the band. What was it like as a woman to join the band? Well, especially, I think because I was 20, around 20 at that time, and I was aware that a lot of the members of the band were younger, and I felt that maybe I was a bit old. But I wanted to learn the accordion, and I think that because of that, and I managed it, achieved that, which was great. And I love just going out in the bands. I've that love for music. Um, I needn't worry because everyone welcomed me once I got there, you know. There's been females in our band, you know, for years. There was a learner, a lady teaching before John. John was teaching at the time I started. And then there's different posts, drummers, you know, the fly carriers and our drum majors. So... It was always welcoming, and I think I'm hoping it's still the same when you join. <laughs> what opportunities has being in a band given you? Well, we've travelled to, you know, Northern Ireland, over to Scotland, and we've done the Republic of Ireland, lots of concerts, you know, different functions, and we participate in the parades. So we've participated in things where travel's good, and it helps young people too get out and about. And I've participated in various courses too when I've been in the band, you know. So it's educational as well. Do you think bands are a positive representation of culture? Yes, I do think it is because I grew up in a home where my father was an orange man and he was in all of the organisations there. We were taken to the parades and I loved seeing the bands and the pageantry, the colour of the banners and the mix of all the music from flutes, pipes, silver, brass and accordions. So I think that maybe encouraged me too to want to play an instrument. And I played the piano anyway, so it was lovely then, you know, doing another instrument later in life. Do you think it's important for women and young people in particular to be in a band? Yes, I think it's important for women and youth to join. I believe it's important for the young people to get involved in a band, learning an instrument very good committing their time and being a team member as many benefits in life for everyone so especially the young and women can achieve the health benefits physical exercise and the mental opportunity the mental well-being for yourself to get out and meet people and just doing different things and so many opportunities there when you're in the band what do you personally see for the future of your band well, I see the band continuing to flourish. Killaloo Accordion Band was formed in 1936 and over the last 85 years has continued to thrive. At the moment, it is in good shape and I see new members joining, which will ensure the future well-being of the band. So we've got new drummers enlisted there and new ones ready to learn. Do you think COVID has led to a resurgence in culture and banding? I do think that because we had a few members that had been in the band years ago and maybe their family now and it's getting maybe easier for them to come back in again. So we have two or three out coming out and they want to get to know the new tunes and learn again. So it's good and I think that has helped. 
Do you think bands should engage with all communities in Northern Ireland to challenge misconceptions and show the positives of being in a band? As a member of a band, I respect all cultures and feel we should be treated with respect also. I think work is being done in the community to help the situation make known what the aim of the bands is. Do you think the media play their part in perpetuating misconceptions about bands? Yes, I think indeed sometimes they do. And that it's when you're with the band and you have an interest in the music and a love for the music that it does help and it, it lets you see, you know, that it's not harmful in any way. It's um, nearly a hobby for some people because it's a good interest and they're enjoying that time. A lot of young people have said that being a band has actually helped them academically. Do you believe that being a band has helped the younger members of Killaloo Accordion Band? Yes, I think they do too. And our band, you maybe want me to say too, that we don't play with music, that we play by notes. But I believe that that helps those who maybe feel they can't go to a band and read music. So it's not that we have any lower standards or anything. It's just that it maybe makes someone happier that they're able to play an accordion that way. Piano accordions are played differently. So it allows for music to come out stronger maybe more volume and all the rest but i believe that we have so many in the band that enjoy coming along and even with that it helps because there's up country people there's town folk and it's just everybody's treated the same in a band so it doesn't matter whether it's proper music notes that you're reading or numbers i think that's very good achievement for anyone to play an instrument and if they want to play an accordion it's a good way to learn i'm now joined by adele muller from the hamilton flute band so adele how and why did you join the hamilton flute band um i always kind of had a thing for drumming from when i was about three kind of all started when i started drumming on the bin in the kitchen and um I kind of approached bands and they turned me away and said you can either flip or play the flag, play the flag, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can carry a flag and then I approached Darren and Stephen and they said I could come along. You're actually quite a historic member of the Hamiltons as you're their first female drummer so you've had a bit of discrimination against you by bands, how did that make you feel? I was a bit annoyed because I've always loved drumming and any time I was at a parade I'd always end up buying drumsticks or bring them with me. What do you feel is the best part of being in a band? I think it's just getting to do what you've always wanted to do and getting out in the streets and seeing everybody. Do you think there is negative perceptions about people in bands and how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like annoyed because like, if you want to do something and they're not letting you, it's not really fair. What is your perception about negative stereotypes about bands? Um, I don't know, I think it's fair because like if somebody wanted to say drum and they're not letting them and they have a passion for it and a talent, it's, it's not really fair. What have you enjoyed about being in a band so far? Probably being allowed to drum and um, just meeting new people and the Hamiltons are like a second family to me now. What would you say to bands that do not allow a woman to either play the drum or join in the band? I don't really think it's fair either because like it's more members as well and with the likes of the Hamiltons they now have like more history and just it's more members in bands really. So do you think it's important for a woman to join bands? Um, just to do if they want to do something go for it and it's an our hobby and it's fun. I'm now joined by Janice Channing from the Churchill Flip Band. So Janice, how and why did you join the Churchill Flip Band? Um, I joined way back when I was 12 years of age. It was a, an elderly gentleman. It was actually a family. A family member um, taught the learners group, Willie Doherty, he called him. He was my grandmother's cousin. So he actually just came to my grandmother and said, do you want to ask Janice and my brother Keith and my cousin April, did they want to join the band? That was it. I can't remember any reason why we wanted to do it, but just because we were asked, we... Um, we joined. So unfortunately, I'm the only one that stayed and the rest all left and I, I stuck with it. After you joined, you obviously then enjoyed it. So that's why you stuck with it. How did you progress through the band, through the different flutes up to playing 
the treble now. Do you know what? It's one of those things that I ended up, I found out I was good at it. So for me, I enjoyed going every week. It wasn't a chore. I was just I was just good at playing the foot. So I actually had a really a few good mentors as I was growing up. So Drew Porter, everyone knows Drew Porter. Um, he used to say he um, made the band around me, my sound and what I could play. Um, but another gentleman called Alvin Foster, which mightn't be a well-known name for a lot of people, but he um, he took me under my under his wing when I was very young. He moved aside from Solo G and allowed me to step into the Solo G. Um, he was an absolute uh, legend to meet Alvin Foster. He still got some family members in the band. Thankfully, his, uh, his name still carried on. But um, I think just because it was good and people saw I had a bit of talent, I just kept progressing. It made it really easy and really enjoyable for me to come to band every week. What would you say are the positives of being in a band? Um, I would say it's the bonds um, and the lifelong friendships you make um, and the support network that's there if you need it. I mean, there's organisations like Glide of Foot which was a group set up for the for band members here at Northern Ireland, and it's aimed at mental health issues. I mean, that's definitely like a well-needed platform for some people. And then during lockdown, um, London Dairy Bands Forum had the Fit to March. That got like hundreds of people out throughout Northern Ireland out keeping fit. Um, we all had a competition where you're trying to beat each person in your band. Your band was trying to beat other people. It was a great communication between bands during lockdown. Um, that's a really good thing whenever you've got that friendship and that big group of people that you can um, you can rely on through difficult times. So, yeah, definitely for me, it's the friendships. What opportunities and experiences have you gained from being in a band? I would say one of the standouts for me personally was when I went to RAF Witten about eight years ago. Um, I stayed on camp and they had a voluntary RAF band and uh, I joined it so I played with it for six months it was absolutely amazing for me I got to play the pickle at um, royal engagements and played at battle of britain cel uh, celebrations that for me personally was probably one of the the best highlights of my time but then you, like, it's all the places you can go um, people you can meet so we did the tattoo we we're chatting to people from south africa we got to meet chelsea pensioners um it's just it's just experience, you know. I don't do it, and I don't do it for any personal gain. Um, I never wanted a career out of it. I just enjoyed it. Um, so for me, it's just like all the friendships and all the places you get to see and the people you get to go with. Um, the song I've, I've done the song on quite a few occasions with both the Churchills and the Imperial Corps drums, and then I suppose out of out of the Churchills formed Main City Beat. So five of us had a ten years of Main City Beat. It was really. It was really good fun. Um, I suppose it wasn't for the Churchills. We wouldn't have had the, those 10 years of fun. What was it like personally for you as a woman joining a band? So were there many women in the band at the time? The Churchills was a mainly, as far as I remember, um, male band. And they had, I think, one or two girls started years before I joined. When I joined, there was quite a few girls. Um, quite a few. But unfortunately, the girls all came and went. It seemed to be when they met boys, they all decided to to leave the band. Um, me personally, joining the band as a girl made no difference to me what sex I was. Um, I wasn't treated any different. I just progressed through the ranks like like anybody else. I got the opportunity of being secretary for 20 years. So no, I don't really think being young or being a woman in a band made any difference. Do you think it's important for young women and girls to join bands? I think it's important for anybody to join bands, regardless of of uh, boys or girls. I mean, the opportunities, like I said before, the opportunities that you um, that you're given, places you get to go. Um, obviously, there's also also that learning capability. You get you get taught to play an instrument. You get taught to read music. That's that's um, that's good to have as well. So I don't really think should it be a, a boy or a girl. I think just joining a band is a really good thing to do whenever you're young. It takes you away from the computer those computer games and things so regardless of your boy or girl I think it's good to get into bands. And what do you think could be done to encourage more young people to join bands? That's a very difficult question because I think every band struggle, struggles at the minute to try and get young people in because society is all computer games etc. Um, it's very hard. We have a lot of past members who have children. Probably the first place to start is the past members and see if they're children would be interested. Um, just don't know this, these, this day and age, how, how to, get, to get young ones in. Do 
Do you think bands should engage with all communities in Northern Ireland to challenge misconceptions and show the positives of being in a band? Well, the unfortunate thing is a lot of bands do already do cross community um, engagements, community engagements, cross border engagements. Um, ourselves, we've been to Limerick a few times. The Hamilton Flip Band have been down south. Um, we've also done the FLA here a few years back. But the mainstream media don't seem to show us in a positive light. If it's not controversial, the media don't want to show it. The only time you see uh, marching bands on the news is mainly when there's controversy attached to it. Um, I mean, most bands spend £30,000 on uniforms, £30,000 on flutes, um, do lots of work for the community, raise money for different charities, but it's never shown, it's never uh, publicised. So um, I think things like the London Dairy Bands Forum um, and the Ulster Bands Forum, getting the good side of marching bands out there, I think that's a really good aspect. Um, but we need to encourage more of the mainstream media to get on our side, um, and show what we do. Obviously, the Churchills are one of the oldest bands in the island of Ireland. I've been formed in 1835. What do you see for the future of the Churchills? Um, difficult times ahead. It's not just for us, for lots of bands, for the reason that they're trying to um, encourage young people into the bands. Um, years ago, the flip marching bands was a good way to socialise young people like computer games and things these, these days. So we have a good core in the Churchill Flip Band that are determined to keep it to keep it going as long as we can. We've got the Porter family <laughs> <laughs> um, who do a lot, a lot of hard work behind the scenes. So I see a tough road ahead, but I see a, a, a positive one. We'll not we're, we'll keep we'll keep uh, motoring on. We'll not let we'll not let anything happen to the band. We'll make sure it's still there next 10, 20, 30 years. Do you think COVID has sort of led to a little bit of a resurgence? and the interests of the culture and tradition around bands? I actually think COVID has had a positive effect on, on bands. If you look at the band parades that's actually been happening, that's been allowed to happen, that the people, the spectators, the size of bands and spectators has, has been phenomenal. Um, obviously, you're going to have a few people who have had other interests or found other hobbies and maybe the band isn't for them anymore. But I, I can see it as a, as a positive thing. We're all, we've been locked up for 18 months. We want out. We want to play our flutes. We want to meet our friends. We want to enjoy enjoy things again. So maybe COVID has had a, a, a good effect on some band members. Really, just what has being in a band brought to your life personally? Personally, it's, uh, it, it is, it's friendships. And, um, just friendships that I've had. I've got friends from Scotland, England, all over the place that I would never have had if I hadn't been for the Churchill Foot Band. Um, we people that I probably would never had the chance to speak to before. Um, I've had I've got some lifelong friends because of the Churchills and because of the band scene. Um, that's priceless to me. Thank you to Adele, Jane, and Janice for joining us today. And on behalf of the London Dairy Bands Forum, can we thank all our guests that took the time this week to be part of the Beat of the Drum podcast for the Community Relations Council Group Relations Week. You can follow us on the London Dairy Bands Horn Facebook, Twitter and YouTube to see our good work over the rest of the year.